Uh, and he was under pressure, and he, instead of throwing it away, he threw it into a big, big crowd and very fortunate not to turn it over. Second down and 10 for the Wildcats. Matt Hoard threw his 15th touchdown pass of the season, but his team trails at 22 to 7. On a half roll again, that one is picked off. It's Ron Atkins on his way down the far sideline, and he will score. Ron Atkins. <laughs> A 5'11 sophomore from Wyandotte Roosevelt High School takes it to the house as he read Horde that time all the way. Horde throws interception number six. Atkins picks up his second interception and skip. He has picked two this season, both for touchdowns. For touchdowns. Once again, though, here's the decision making, you know, that, and this is a poor decision again on Horde's part. How about this young man? Is he happy or what? And let's take a look at Horde this time right now. He's going to roll out right here. No pressure at all. Well, there it is, folks. That was the problem here. You can see it now on the replay. It slips out of his hand. Throws the ball completely behind the receiver. Once again, weather plays a part in the turnover. And I think that's what you said in the open. So you're very insightful. No, I thought you said it in the open. Okay. <laughs> 20, well, well, we'll both take credit for it. 28-7, Tartars out in front. They'll try for two once again. Placements have not been kind to them today. Ball Hand off to Reese, and it is fumbled, and so the two-point conversion goes by the boards. So we'll stay with a 28-7 score. And there's Ron Atkins. What a great play by that young man. Third leading tackler for this Tartar team coming into this afternoon's action. We'll take one more look at it from ground level. And as you see, he tries to, and the ball just slips right out of his hand. Once again, when things are going well, they seem to go one way, and it's all the green way right now. I mean, he catches the ball right in full motion, running right to the goal line. And there was any question, all he had to do was catch the football, and it was six points. A little TV time. Everybody's happy. Well, very, very happy faces. It's been a long season. And five straight losses for Wayne State. What a, a, a way to end it. You know, not saying, folks, that this game is over. There's still four minutes to go in the third quarter, and many, many things can happen, as we do see now once Northern gets the wind in this last quarter. But what a way to go into your recruiting season, a big win over a team who was trying to make the playoffs, hoping to make the playoffs here, and uh, a real good Northern Michigan football team. Excellent Northern Michigan team, and they have been held to just seven points, which would be their lowest output of the season, yes. if this holds up. Yes. But as you pointed out, 4.03 to play here in the third, as Fishburn kicks, and Dijinsky slides forward trying to pick it up. He's got the 20 and the 25, trying to take it to the outside. Northern in need of a big play. Dujinski almost able to deliver. Takes it out to the 38-yard line, and so that is where the Wildcats will set up shop. It's like a skating pond in the middle of that field right now. As you see, they're sliding all over the place. I think that's 85. But it is getting more difficult as we go along here through the course of the day. Except the, a kicker. Clean uniform, yeah. <laughs> the kicker, yeah. The kicker, yeah. He kickers, I'll clean. tell you what, he's going to go grab a coat now, sit down, and says, let me know when I got to do it again. <laughs> That's Matt Fishburne, the place kicker for Wayne State. Board bends under center and the toss to Stoner. Stoner with good blocking pops it into the secondary, into Wayne State territory, still on his feet to the 35 of the Tartars. So just as soon as Wayne State makes a big play, Northern Michigan Comes says right if back. we can't pass, let's try running. Well, as we're going to take a look at this, there's nothing fancy about this. This is just the pitch out to the tailback, and he's going to take it around the right end. Nothing fancy right here. It's just good blocking up front, bad tackling. That's what the problem is here, folks. Horrible tackling. And some bad angles taken by the linebackers, and uh, they were reduced to trying arm tackles. 3.46 to play in the third. 28-7, Wayne State in front. Stoner will try the left side this time, and he's dragged down at the 32-yard line after a pickup of three. Well, you certainly want to hold Northern in check right now. You certainly don't want to give up a touchdown going into the win. You want to make sure that you maximize the use of this clock and the win in this quarter. 
Maximize what is <laughs> Stoner with 94. That's a good word, Skip. Stoner with 94 yards this afternoon. He has had two consecutive 100-plus yard games, and uh, in all likelihood, he will make it three in a row, as he has made a name for himself as a freshman on the Northern Michigan campus. He'll carry again on second down. Big hole, picking his way to the 26 or 7-yard line. A couple yards short of the first down. Well, Northern now is in four down territory. He's second in about two, second in about one and a half anyhow. And they got two cracks now to, to get a first down. And they realize how important it is right now to put some points on the board, whether it be the pass or the run. John Aird, number eight, the freshman safety from Frazier High School. It's a good way to get hurt there. You stop before trying to avoid the tackle. Good way to get your ankle or knee hurt. Run through to the defender. Third and short from the 27. And Stoner with a big hole off the draw, across the 20, down to about the 17-yard line. So it'll be a northern first down. Well, what Wayne State seems to be doing right now is uh, the two... They're a little complacent here right now with this lead and thinking this game is over. Once again, as we mentioned, when it was four and a half minutes left to go in the game, there's only two and a half, and now they're almost in scoring position. Here, yeah, certainly, maybe for a field goal and possible touchdown. Dominic Livadotti looking concerned. Actually, that was Jason McGlone on that last carry, but obscuring the numbers. Pitch to the tailback. And we'll have to wait and see if that was McGlone or not negligible pickup on the play as it was Embry, Robert Embry, number 50, over to make the stop on McGlone. And here's the replay right now. Folks, you can see right there, Ford had trouble again. Seems to be pulling his hands out from the center, and the snaps aren't very clean at all. Maybe his hands, it could be that his hands are being hurt by the snap being so hard going up into his hands. Second down and 10, minute 29 for the third quarter. Hand off, McGlone again, struggling forward, breaking into the secondary across the 10 to the 9. So as soon as they take out Stoner, they bring in McGlone, and he is running well with a fresh set of legs, number 13, and carries down to about the 9-yard line. And once again, this is, uh, even though they're up three touchdowns, they have to play defense. Here's a team that you cannot lay back on. They play this type of football, Pete. They've come from behind in a number of games this season long. They know how to do that. Clock rolling, 47 seconds to play in the third. High formation. McGlone forced back, trips and falls back at the 10, lost maybe half a yard. It was Rod Simmons, number 41, the sophomore out of Oak Park High School, the top tackler for the Tartars, making the stop. That'll bring up fourth down and a couple yards to go. So four down territory, one would expect as you look at the play here with McGlone getting stopped, blocking totally stopped up. 13 seconds to go in the quarter, apparently. Northern will run the play to end the third quarter. Fourth down and two. Hand off to the tailback, and he did not get it. I believe that was Stoner came back in for that fourth down play. He was stopped and stonewalled. As you look at the Wayne State defense, that's Rod Simmons making the play. And once again, Wayne State has turned back the Wildcats for the third time inside the 20-yard line. Once again, Northern likes to throw the football, having trouble 10th in the conference running the football. And here's the reason why. At the point of attack, blocking broke down in two or three different places, and you can't pick up a yard. That's sad. When you're in goal line situations and it's fourth, and you've got four down, three downs to make four, you know, it's just... Uh, it's terrible blocking, just absolute terrible block. Two seconds to play here in the third. The handoff to Earl Reese, securing the ball, burrowing forward to about the 10-yard line, and we have reached the end of the third quarter. It's a bit of a surprise here, but Wayne State on Senior Saturday energizing this crowd that has braved the elements with a big third quarter. They put up three touchdowns and a couple of two-point conversions. They lead it 28-7. It's here. What is? More big-time TV. 
Detroit 62 CBS is bigger than ever with me, Jerome Seinfeld. Five nights a week at 6 on 62 CBS. It's Seinfeld. It's big. And hey, don't forget hard copy weeknights at 7 and a current affair at 7.30. Together again. Now there's more big time TV on Detroit 62 CBS. It's 62. I'm Ed Lancaster. I was a Pennsylvania State Police Officer for 25 years. During those years, department regulations did not permit active members to endorse name brand security devices. But now that I'm retired, I can tell you, this club really works. In my many years of investigating crime, I have never experienced a car stolen while the club was in use. The fact is, the club has proven to be over 99% effective in eliminating auto theft. Our ears have become immune to the sirens and horns caused by vehicle false alarms. Not with the club, it doesn't false alarm. Its high visibility and tough construction lets thieves know that this car is immobilized. Your vehicle anti-theft device should be the same one I and most other police officers use. Make sure your anti-theft device says the club on the handle. Let Winter International protect your family from harm with the Door Club Home Security Device. Now available at Sears. Look, something totally unique. Anderson Honda Jeep Eagles Used Car Emporium. Unique because here, Anderson deals only in fine used cars like these. Every model, style, price, and payment range. Now, here's what to do. Remember this phone number and call us right now on these used cars or tell us what you're looking for. Only used cars at a price and payment you can afford. Anderson in Waterford. Remember the phone number and call us right now. Anderson. We start the fourth quarter of what has been a very entertaining game. And a, a really very unusual that we've seen a 28 to 7 score with Wayne State leading at this point of the game, to tell you the truth. Well, you would not have expected it when no. you looked at the conditions earlier today. Uh, the but track has dried up a little bit. It's not so much of a lake, but you see the mud on the players. And, uh, and the it, weather has not been good and flags all over the place as both sides jumped. And it'll be interesting to see which way this penalty is going to be called. But a very, uh, excuse me, Skip, a very critical series for Wayne State. You don't want to turn it over, and they get a break because it's offside yeah. against Northern Michigan here. You don't want to turn it over this deep in your own end of the field. And now Wayne no. State facing the wind here in the fourth. Yeah, you, you certainly don't. Pete, also, the defense was on the field for about, and you see the people jumping all over the place. Frederick's using a little different cadence. And, and getting the defense to jump. Right now, they got to be a little itchy. Defense is being told right now to try to create a turnover so we can get some points. But you certainly want to move the stakes now so you can give your defense some rest. Second down here, ball just across the 15. Handoff, Gillert spinning forward to about the 20-yard line. That'll put him very near a Wayne State first down, and that would be a very big first down as Wayne State trying to possess the football here mm -hmm. and run some time off the clock as you get a good look at Arnie Gillard. Well, you know something, I think you have to change your philosophy now of whatever that might be with the wind, the throwing, and I'm saying defensively wise, you got to man up on the outside people and put everybody in the tackle to tackle area to stop the run. It's going to be very difficult and then you got four deep back here. I don't I, I don't think it's necessary. I really don't. Get everybody in this tackle to tackle and make it difficult for them to run the football. And Gillard picks up the first down via the rush. Earl Reese off the fullback dive and there hasn't been much for the fullback to do. Mm -hmm. And now we're going to have flags thrown and this not a very smart play as Nate Bush got into it with uh, Mike Lafito, the cornerback, away from the play. A little pushing and shoving. It's a dead ball, personal foul on Wayne State. And this is a silly, silly foul at this point in juncture. Right and there. nobody knows that more than Dominic Livadotti. Nate Bush making some big plays today, but that one, that'll make Dominic it's, it's face a silly go red. Play. Yeah, it's, it's just, it's uncalled for. It's on, it's on. And now he's going to, come out of the game and he's going to hear a little bit about this. So they mark it off half the distance to the goal and that puts it at about the 10 yard line. Line to make is the 30 so it's second down and 20.
Radke, the motion man. Frederick on the pitch, and Gillert stopped for a loss. 